Hello and welcome to another edition of another book review. This week I'll be reviewing Going Infinite by Michael Lewis. I'll talk very briefly about the author, go into an overview about what the book is about, talk about what I liked about it, why I didn't like about it, who I'd recommend the book to, and finish off with what I'll be reading for next time. Uh, Michael Lewis is a very well-known uh, nonfiction author. He's probably still best known for the, the Big Short, but he's had several of his different works made into movies. The Big Short, um, The Blind Side, and Moneyball have all been made into major blockbuster movies. I reviewed The Fifth Risk a few years ago now, and I'll leave a link below to that video if you want to learn more about Michael Lewis in that video, uh, from that video. Uh, this book, Going Infinite, is about the rise and fall, the really spectacular rise and fall of FTX Capital, uh, FTX Crypto Exchange, as well as Alameda Research, which are both started by a man named Sam Bankman fried And Michael Lewis is able to basically give a history of the companies as well as Sam himself. It uh, goes into his background, uh, kind of his political ideologies and beliefs, and gives a relatively thorough account of what happened uh, in regards to the charges that Sam Bankman fried is now finding himself in. I think as of this recording, his trial has begun in terms of wire fraud, and he's been uh, charged with defrauding uh, the people who were investing in the crypto exchange uh, FTX Capital, which was worth billions and billions of dollars. Sam Bankman fried was at one point in time uh, really rivaling Mark Zuckerberg in terms of um, wealth and I'd say also political capital or political uh, sway uh, in terms of people who are relatively young um, and was on the cover of Fortune magazine and was really considered to be uh, one of the leading proponents of making crypto considered more um, acceptable and was uh, one of the things they learned in the book, and I'll say for the, the pros of the book, I think Michael Lewis is probably the best writer in America in terms of writing about finances and really writing about financial markets for lay people. I think sometimes when he's writing about governmental institutions, I maybe disagree with him a little bit more than when he's writing about finance. But uh, I think he's perfect at writing, coming up with an analogies and explaining to lay people relatively sophisticated um, Topics not only in this, but also obviously the Big Short as well. But it, it's really pretty profound here as well as his sense of humor too comes to the book, which I thought was really nice. And I still I, th I think he's just one of the best writers when it comes to explaining, you know, relatively um, complex issues in the financial markets to lay people. I think he's the best, and so I think that comes through in this book. I think he gets a pretty strong amount of access to the different parties and explains kind of how people tick. I think if there's one thing that was interesting in this book that I learned was about, you know, Sam Bankman frieds politics and his ideologies and how it led him to make certain decisions. Um, if there's downsides of this book, uh, I'd say that um, obviously Sam Bankman fried is, is pleading not guilty to these charges. And so the one part of it uh, from a detective standpoint, you want to get to the, well, why did what happened happen? Is this a garden variety fraud or is there a deeper reason for this was the money embezzled in order to continue this person's quest for for political power or was it just kind of a garden variety moving one money from one account to another account in order to shore up uh, losses and so that's kind of what's being alleged here it's alleged that sam bankman fried took uh, money from crypto the crypto exchange and used that to um, shore up losses of the hedge fund, which was Alameda. He founded both of them. He was involved romantically with the CEO of Alameda, who he basically placed as the CEO. They became kind of, they became kind of, they began kind of a clandestine affair. And it's a question of if that was part of the reason for this all kind of falling apart. So it's a pretty interesting story. It's a pretty quick read. I don't know how much I learned that's kind of brand new, and I don't know how much other people are going to, to get from it uh, that's not kind of readily known, but I think Michael Lewis writes in a pretty breezy style that's pretty fun. Uh, if you're looking for kind of the underlining reasons for stuff, I, I don't know if that's really there. If you're looking to avoid kind of the, the glorification of another uh, 
Elon Musk or, or Mark Zuckerberg, kind of these billionaires who have kind of strange personality foibles. Uh, Sam Bankman Free definitely has strange personality foibles. And just kind of the stories of them burning through money and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, the tungsten cube uh, story comes up a couple times. It's pretty funny. Um, it reminded me, I watched the old Mr. Show skit, Grass Valley Greg, and Sam Bankman Fried reminded me a lot of Grass Valley Greg when I was reading this. So um, if that's something that you were completely not wanting to hear more about, then you probably should skip this book. I, I thought it was interesting, him going and understanding kind of who Sam, Sam Bankman Fried was, just kind of this person who was a mathematical whiz and got um, swept up in this idea of the effective altruists in that kind of philosophy I thought was pretty interesting and how um, under that aegis kind of he says at one point in, in point in time uh, Sam ba he has Sam Bankman Freed basically say you know there's not enough money in politics and I thought that was pretty funny um, so yeah it's kind of just a, a, a relatively quick read about the rise and fall of FTX and the founder of that company and kind of how the whole thing worked why it was successful it's kind of quest to in some ways become a very become the most legitimate uh, crypto exchange if any of that's interesting to you i'd pick it up it's a quick read i don't know how much of it's going to stick with me long term but i did enjoy it while i was reading it and i was happy to see uh michael lewis back in writing about finance i think that's kind of where his his strengths are the strongest um so yeah i would check it out not something that i think will probably stick with me for very long i definitely don't think it's as good as the big short um, but I enjoyed it while I was reading it. I wish there was more in maybe the, there's basically, you know, the rise of the company and then he kind of switches from Sam's perspective to the bankruptcy perspective. So you kind of see the various sides of the bankruptcy process, which was also kind of interesting, but that seems kind of, uh, part of the like quick tail end of the book that goes by pretty quickly once you've realized that the company is failing. So as the old... Hemingway quote is slowly at first and everything at once, um, to paraphrase that quote. So that's kind of, that's the book. And uh, if it's interesting to you, it's done really well. If it's not something interesting to you, I don't know uh, if there's any hooks to really interest you in that story. So that's Going Infinite by Michael Lewis. Next coming time, I'm going to be reading Trust by Hernan Diaz. Until next time, please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll leave the link below to the review for The Fifth Risk. Till next time, bye.